to one of our top stories and the tsunami warnings they are in place across the Pacific after an underwater volcano eruption caused tidal waves to hit Tonga. For more on the tsunami in Australia's weather, we're joined now by our meteorologist Rob Sharp. Rob, good morning to you. So first of all, can you explain to us what is a tsunami and how did this one form? Yeah, so a tsunami, Janny, is essentially a uh, tidal wave, as you mentioned previously. So this one formed due to the volcanic eruption that took place in Tonga. So essentially, it sends out a shock wave both in the air. Uh, so it sent out, you might be able to see it briefly there on the satellite, a little ring that went out. So we actually felt that in Australia, it had a little pressure a dimple in what was going on in the pressure pattern across Australia. Uh, but it's not just a, a, a wave in the air, but it's also one that goes through the water in this case in the form of a tsunami. Uh, so the water levels have uh, a, a compression wave essentially has formed and that essentially leads to that a huge amount of water uh, being pushed up onto the landscape uh, in the form of a tsunami in this case, uh, quite evident in uh, Tonga, uh, Janie. Yeah, it certainly is. And Rob, what kind of impact will we see along our shoreline today from tsunamis? Yeah, so we've got a tsunami warning in place and so there's a land warning for Lord Howe Island and for Norfolk Island. So that means that uh, the tsunami uh, could go over land and not just in the water. And so uh, people in those areas are warned to uh, either go at least 10 metres above sea level or move a kilometre inland in order to make sure that they're safe from that. However, for Australia, uh, it is not a land warning. It's just a marine warning. So we're seeing uh, dangerous coastal conditions right along the east coast from the Fraser Island coast all the way down to the east coast of Tasmania. We've already seen quite a few observations of tsunamis. So uh, in Tonga, a 1.2 metre tsunami, Norfolk Island similar, 1.3 metres, whilst the Gold Coast has had an 80 centimetre tsunami. And we've had similar scenes down the east coast, even to Tasmania, 12 centimetre the tsunami has been observed and there is a threat that we could see more as further volcanic eruptions take place in Tonga. So do you advise people to stay away from the beaches across the eastern parts of Australia today? Yeah, that is definitely the advice, particularly south from the Fraser Island coastline. So uh, being out in the water is dangerous because we can have some dangerous currents and rips forming. And each of these waves, they're quite different to typical waves. There's a lot more water behind each individual tsunami than there is behind a typical wave that hits our beaches. So they're a lot more powerful and they can cause problems for you if you're out in the water. And it could it look misleading as well if, if people do even attempt to, to head to the waters? Yeah, so it's not the safest day to be out in the water, that's for sure. Great. What about th thunderstorms, uh, Rob? Are they going to be severe across parts of the southeast today? Oh, we had some really dynamic storm weather, as you can see from this vision here from Penrith yesterday. We had a supercell thunderstorm that came through parts of Western Sydney. So we had plenty of thunderstorms around eastern New South Wales. Uh, but the one that came through around sunset uh, was moving in a northerly direction. So a supercell thunderstorm that came in to parts of Western Sydney uh, with large hail and damaging winds associated with that one. Uh, but plenty of other thunderstorms have been active in northeastern New South Wales and storms are still active right now in southeastern parts of Queensland. So a stormy start to the day. Uh, those thunderstorms are just finishing moving through Brisbane, but they're still quite active up around Gympie, but they're not severe at the moment, but they're potentially severe later on today. So uh, there's the chance of thunderstorms in the yellow shaded areas and thunderstorms are likely to form in those red shaded regions later on this afternoon with the risk uh, that some storms could produce damaging winds or potentially heavy rain with the slight risk of large hail as well. But across the country, aside from southeast Queensland with the storm risk, storms also chance in central Australia up into the north with our extropical cyclone Tiffany, whilst in the south of the country, fairly dry weather and it's fairly warm as well today. Danny? And looking quite good for the cricket in Hobart, 23 degrees. Not too much rain there, <laughs> which is good news. But uh, finally, Rob, extropical cyclone Tiffany, as you mentioned, it's certainly mm. going to uh, uh, bring some flooding rain to eastern parts of the country, and it has already to Western Australia. 
Yeah, it's still active in Western Australia. So today we're seeing heavy rain in WA and it's spreading down into the Northern Territory and Northwestern parts of South Australia today with areas of heavy rainfall and the risk of flooding. At the moment, the severe weather warning is just for Western Australia, but it's expected to move into the Territory and also into South Australia later on today. So heavy rain and damaging winds are risk across this region. But after that, the system will continue its journey through Central Australia uh, and then it's it's going to link up with some upper cold air moving up from the south and so that's going to turn into a long-lasting rain event uh, across multiple states and territories uh, so you can see some areas of heavy rain in parts of Queensland, New South Wales and potentially into parts of Victoria and South Australia at times as well so it's a long-lasting event uh, right through the coming week maybe into the start of next week as well we could still see significant rainfall uh, leading to flooding in multiple areas. At this stage, the greatest risk is in New South Wales, but many other states and territories will also see flooding. But for New South Wales, you can see uh, the widespread 50 to 100 millimetre forecast right across the east and the centre, even out to Burke and Cobar. That's a pretty decent chance of those kind of totals as well. There is, of course, a fair bit of uncertainty with a complex weather event like this, but the flooding could easily be as bad as what we saw in November across New South Wales when we had somewhere around five or eight rivers uh, it reaching major flood levels and people might remember that kind of impact in Forbes as well. So it is a significant weather event that is on the way and we'll keep a close eye on it all week on Channel 601. Janie? Yeah, certainly a lot happening today and over the next few days and of course you'll uh, keep us up to date on any warnings if they change regarding the uh, tsunami situation. Thanks sure. so much Rob.